Hi everyone, I'm Kylie the Jellyfish. Today I'm going to go over part three of my full series of how to color hair for beginners. This one's going to be about maintaining healthy hair. <sighs> oil your hair a lot. Oil it. Just oil it up. Yes, it. do it. Do I started that abruptly. The main thing you need to know and that you need to learn about coloring hair is that there are many ways of taking care of your hair. I've met people who have virgin hair that they don't do anything with, they don't touch it, and it's frizzy and it's really hard to work with. And I've met some people who can color their hair all the way white blonde and it's strong and healthy and amazing and it doesn't break. And it's just about genetics. Sometimes there's certain things you can't do. This is as light as my hair can get. If I were to push it any higher, which I have in the past, it falls off. And I know that now because I'm half Filipina. I don't have the kind of hair that can withstand that much bleach. And eventually, working with your own hair, you will learn too what works or doesn't work for you. Oil your hair a lot. When you put oil in your ends, you are restoring the natural texture back to your hair. If your hair is wavy, you're kind of slicking that down to take away frizz. If your hair is straight, you're at least smoothing down those little dry ends that are probably split ends if your hair's damaged enough. Hair from your scalp produces sebum. Sebum is the natural oil that helps our hair maintain its healthy shine and moisture. So when you're washing your hair with shampoo, you are wicking away that moisture and your ends are lacking it because it really needs what is on the scalp and your hair was probably just too long to reach it. So a good oil is Argan oil. The brand Moroccan oil is Argan oil, so if you have a chance to find Moroccan oil anywhere, it's a great one. But if your hair is pale like this, and you use Moroccan oil or a darker oil like that, you might end up staining your hair kind of an orange color because it is a dark oil, like it looks gold when you put it in your hand. We sell some at my hair salon and the ones that I really like are Kerastase, Kerastase Elixir Ultime, Sebastian Dark Oil, that one's actually really good for fine hair, Wella Oil Reflections, Discipline by Kerastase, I think that's what that one is called, but uh, the ones that I would usually get from the store, I can't remember the name of the brands, but they've always been really promising and really good and I think that the thicker the oil the better even if you have fine hair because if your hair is damaged enough like it'll absorb it over time try it on a day that you don't actually have to go anywhere from here down like don't do your roots 20 minutes to an hour later if your hair is still looking oily good news you probably don't have super dry hair but if it's gone that means you should probably do this more often I also have seen people talk about having to be careful with oils because cheaper oils and oils that aren't really meant for hair can build up on your hair and create texture issues like making your hair get weighed down or making it not, I don't know, just not do the right things. If you realize a oil isn't working for you then just wash your hair like two times and don't use it anymore. Um, I don't have the best advice there, but I do know that I have gotten away with preventing damage in my own hair and a lot of my clients hair by using the oils that we sell at my salon and the oils that I have found at beauty stores pretty often. Another good rule is to swap out conditioner for deep masks. Um, using conditioner is a really good method in general, like if you're the type of person that only uses shampoo, that's fine if you're not coloring your hair, but you should be using it if you color your hair because it seals down the cuticle, it locks in moisture and shine, and prevents hair from getting super tangly, so I mean there's nothing really wrong with it. If you're using one that's too heavy for your hair, you might notice your hair getting really flat or looking really oily even though you just cleaned it. So probably just look for one that's more of a lightweight moisture if your hair is straight or very fine. When you color your hair, you are damaging your hair, without a doubt. Like, I mean chemicals of any kind, opening up the cuticle, flushing out your natural color, and adding an artificial color, it's not a natural process. You have to accept the fact that hair will feel different when you color it. That doesn't mean damaged hair is bad hair. 
because what I've learned is that I like my hair light feeling more than the way I like it when it's my natural dark hair because this hair absorbs oil faster and this hair gets clumpier and oily faster and uh, I can put more moisturizing products into this side whereas on this side I have to use texturizing dry products like like uh, dry shampoo and texture spray and hairspray whereas this side doesn't need any of that this side will have its own form of volume and then all I have to do to smooth it down is add oil or moisture everyone's hair is different but I've learned that you know especially if you have flat hair or a pixie cut or you just desire more texture and volume having blonde hair isn't always a bad thing it actually can help out your style a lot Oh, and for scene kids with like really big hair that swoops over, when my hair was too healthy, it wouldn't stay over uh, across my forehead, but by the time I started bleaching the shit out of my hair, it actually would stay where it was put because it was so much stiffer that it would hold onto the textury feeling of my damaged hair. Swapping out conditioner for masks are good because masks slash deep conditioners have a higher concentration of active ingredients than conditioners do. Um, so if you were to buy a conditioner and the mask version of that conditioner, the mask is just more concentrated. That doesn't mean it's going to be heavier on the hair necessarily, but it's going to be more beneficial for the hair because the active ingredients that make the product good is going to have more of it in the deep mask. Um, so that's why they're typically a little more expensive. But I honestly, I cheat a little bit and I like to add I like to put conditioner into my jars of mask product, so um, I'm basically diluting the mask, but I also make it last longer. And I always choose a conditioner that's also really, really good on its own. Like I'm not going to get a crappy conditioner and ruin my expensive mask with it. Stay away from things like Suave or Dove. Pantene isn't even really good. There's some other ones out there that are just like, just not good products. Like. Like, go for something that would actually be sold at a salon or at Ulta or at a beauty supply. They're usually going to have higher quality ingredients. Don't always use just the same products for everything because if your hair is lacking a, spe a specific type of ingredient or a specific type of moisture and you're only using one product, you might be overdosing on that and you might just need to mix it up a little bit with a different type of ingredient. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean your hair is getting immune to one product. I mean, that's kind of what I'm saying. I'm saying you really shouldn't just use one product. You should mix it up all the time. Always buy something different, even if you find a product you love. You can always have that on your shelf and always use it, you know, once a week, every other week or something like that. But always have something else, too. There's two ways of defining how much hair someone has. If you look at an individual strand of hair and see if it's, like, very fat or very thin, Coarse hair is when you take one individual strand of hair and you feel it and it's a really thick strand of hair. Full hair is when you have more hairs packed into your scalp per square inch. So someone could have a lot of fine hair or they could have very few extremely thick individual coarse strands of hair. People think that they're, they just have really fine hair, but they actually have not as much hair. So if you have really, really fine hair, you'll feel it in between your fingers with one strand and it'll feel really, really thin or feel really, really coarse or somewhere in between. My hair is like average all the way around. It's like average amount of hair from scalp average amount of thickness per strand. Kind of determine from there if your hair can handle a certain amount of moisture. The coarser your hair is, or the frizzy hair, you probably need more moisture than someone who has natural shine in their hair and probably really silky hair. Silky hair will typically be finer as well. Also, fine hair tends to get more tangly than coarse hair. Use leave-in conditioners outside of the shower. So if you get out of the shower and you air dry your hair, leave something in it that will leave it nice and silky and smooth. Or if you dry your hair, 100% definitely use heat protection. If you blow dry your hair from being wet, 
use a leave-in conditioner that has heat protective properties. I know that a lot of my clients like to use um, It's a 10, and I do think that's a good product. I can't remember if it actually has heat protection because I don't remember that when I had it, but um, I do know that it's a common one people use. But just look for products that have heat protection. A great brand that I know for a fact has all products with heat protective properties other than a few exceptions like just a few of their shampoos and things like that is uh, R & Co. R plus C O and this brand is vegan, cruelty free, sulfate and paraben free and they have all products with built in UV protection and heat protection. UV protection will protect your hair from the sun. Even if I'm not using heat on my hair, I still like to have heat protection in there because I don't know if the next day I'm going to show up at work and something's too frizzy and I'm going to have to use my blow dryer to smooth it out, but maybe I just don't have time to grab another product. Also, I do think plenty of products do a better job at getting spread onto the hair when it's wet, so you might as well just have them to put in there. Also, there are some oils out there that have heat protective properties. This one by Cuticle Lisse, I don't know this word, but it's basically a brand that I researched for extensions. Um, it's an Argan Oil Shine Serum and it also is a heat protection. Another rule is do not sleep on wet hair. If you do anything to your hair when it's wet, be very, very gentle with it because wet hair is more fragile than dry hair. If you have to sleep with wet hair, braid your hair because braiding will keep a very even amount of distribution throughout all of the length of your hair so that when you are laying on it, you're crushing it a little bit, but you're not yanking and pulling on specific little strands that will eventually weaken over time and snap off. Um, even if it doesn't break in your sleep, you're weakening it over time so that one day it might have a chance of breaking. Try not to fiddle with your hair too much. If you have a habit of twisting your hair, touching your hair a lot when you have anxiety, I used to have that issue, you're going to get a little bit more damage. Repeated tension over time is going to weaken the hair strand, especially if you're doing it in the same exact zone. So what an issue of mine was when I had my seen hair, is all my hair was swooped over this way so because I was always going like this to push my hair over if it fell on my face I had breakage right here so I had all these little tiny strands poking out that were this short the way I decided to fix it is by getting bangs and I know not everyone wants to get bangs but you could even get really really long bangs and at least if you're having them down and swept to the side down you're not really going to be brushing it up and over your face like you would if it was longer and a great video that I just made um, for bangs if you want to cut your bangs at home. I have this video on how to cut four different kinds of bangs and how to set it up properly and do everything according to your face shape. If you're bleaching your hair, use the lowest developer possible for a longer period of time rather than using a high developer for a shorter period of time. So if you have 10 volume, just use 10 volume. If you have 20 volume, it's okay, use it, but just you know, dilute the product, make it gentle enough where you're watching it and you're not over processing and also when you're retouching roots make sure you're not overlapping the lightener onto the previously lightened hair. Bleach actually expands as it processes so if you're putting it even close to that line of demarcation it's going to spill over that line and still over process a certain band of hair that has already been lifted. Um, so just be very, very careful, and if you can't do it by yourself, have a friend help you. Or just go to a professional, like me. Another tip is to try your best not to wash your hair too often. I am going to not go too far into this because I have an amazing video all about how to not wash your hair. Um, how to not shampoo your hair. You should be washing your hair, but you don't have to use shampoo when you wash your hair. So please click on that video. I'm pretty proud of that one. It, that one actually has some product recommendations as well. You will definitely get more used to not washing your hair with shampoo as often uh, once you've had lightened your hair. Because when hair is blonde, it is drier, Natu not naturally blonde, uh, bleach blonde, and then colored. Like whether it has color in it or not, if it's already been bleached, it's already been bleached. So it, even if it's brown, and it's blonde underneath, consider that blonde hair because it'll always be the same level of damage. <laughs> 
so you won't have as much of an issue over shampooing your hair if your hair is already bleached. And also just a rule of thumb, don't shampoo your hair if you don't need to. Like if you're in the shower, you can rinse your hair or you can use conditioner and use your fingertips to run your fingers over your scalp. Watch that video to learn more. <laughs> Avoid using keratin in products. This one is gonna be a bit of a shocker for some people. Keratin is the protein structure of our hair strand. Our hair is made of keratin. If you have keratin in a product, and you put that onto hair that is too dry to hold onto the keratin, it can get over protonized or over keratinized, which will make your hair more brittle and then break off even further. Treatments are always an option. Treatments are very preventative, not just a band-aid on something that's already done. So I have two treatments that I actually use. I have notifications that go off on my phone seven weeks apart. So alternating seven weeks this, then another seven weeks this, and then so forth and so on, alternating. So I have the Wellaplex um, treatment number one and two, and what you do with this as a standalone treatment, I got it from Cosmoprof, forgot how much they cost, but they're pretty expensive, but they do go a long way. One gram of this to 50 grams of water, and then you put that in your hair and let that sit for five minutes, and then you put number two on top of that without rinsing for a full 20, or no, a full 10 minutes. I forgot, I would say read the instructions because I forget every time I do it. Also have these treatments by Kerastase. This is the Fusio Dose treatment. This one goes a little deeper because it is a concentrated formula of active ingredients that comes in a little bottle. And this is a four week regimen, but you can do it spread out longer. You could go to any salon that sells Kerastase products and get a Fusio Dose treatment, but it is $120 for this. Each of these colors mean a different thing. This one is for color locking and shine. This is for preventing breakage. This one is for moisture. And I used the one right here. It has a teal top on the bottle and that one is also for preventing damage in hair. Um, it's for strengthening weak hair, basically. Look at your options because if you also go to a hair salon, they'll have their own versions of treatments for uh, damaged hair. Overall, the main thing you should be looking for is moisture. If you have a choice between repair and moisture, choose moisture. If you have two choices, one with keratin in it and one with moisture in it, definitely stick with moisture over keratin. It is okay if you already have products with keratin in them, just limit the use. Don't overuse them and don't use them without also using products that have moisture built into it already. Everyone will have something different to say about how to maintain the health of your hair. Honestly, like I said in the beginning, your hair is not gonna react the same way as everyone else's hair. Sometimes it has to do with ethnicity. I know this sounds crazy, but the strongest hair that I've ever seen be able to withstand a lot of bleaching and still be strong and healthy and thick and resilient is typically Eastern European hair. So um, Russian hair, Swedish hair, Nordic hair, Ukrainian hair, Slavic hair, like hair that's just around that region for some reason. Everyone in my chair that goes blonde and they descend from that zone in the world, they have strong hair. Has anyone else experienced this phenomenon? I can't understand why. Maybe I'm just noticing something random that is completely a coincidence. I have two last things before I go. So technically, it is a lot safer for your hair to be retouched with lightener at the root every six to eight weeks. Um, when your roots start growing brown, if you wait too long, like if you wait for it to get past that half inch mark, it's too far away from the hot root zone where your scalp will naturally incubate the heat, process the lightener fast enough. So you're gonna have your previously colored hair, and then you're gonna have an orange band, and then you're gonna have pale hair. That middle band is probably happening just because your roots are too long to be doing color like that with. In that case, just do a second application. But yeah, it's really hard retouching hair. That's one thing that I just gave up with as a teenager. I would bleach my whole head once, and then let it grow down to here, and then redo all of that and just leave the ends out. Like I would kind of cover the ends with conditioner, 
Um, nowadays, when I do it, I would put it in foils so that when the first few foils are done processing, I lift everything up, rinse that out, and then I leave these in so that they can process until they're done. I also never put lightener in my hair if I don't have a bond building treatment in there. This is one of those things that I would say you're probably going to want to go to a professional for anyways. If you know of Olaplex, there are other brands out there like it. I don't know all of them, but I know there's B3, and I um, my salon uses Wellaplex because our entire color system is by Wella, so the color, the Wellaplex bond building treatment works best with Wella products. In my opinion, it actually works better than Olaplex. Bond builders have properties to them that treat the hair as it's being lifted, and you, it's very, very strong. It's a super strong formula. Be very careful about the ratios, like read all the instructions and really pay attention because you can break your hair by using it wrong, but your hair will never be healthier if you use the product right. Wellaplex is like in a bottle, pour the liquid into your bowl of lightener and you mix that up into there and then when you apply it to the hair, it's treating the hair as it's lifting it instead of, you know, damaging your hair and then having to come back and fix it later. Once you've rinsed it all out, you have the treatment number two to put on your hair for 10 minutes, rinse it out, and then shampoo and condition. And from there, then you can like color your hair too. And there's other products, like there's shampoos and conditioners with the molecule of the bond builder within it, but it's in a very small amount. So I'm not really sure what people are capable of getting without a license. Don't trust Amazon because I've purchased Wellaplex from Amazon before when I was in a rush and I just needed it for home like I didn't use it at the salon and it was super diluted like I could tell it was like watered down it didn't smell as strong as the original and uh, that's how people scam you because it was also $30 and the the regular system for one time like a small pack is usually $120 or something I I can't remember it's probably like 68 I, I'm wrong but um, if you were to buy the full system for like a salon, it's $260. It's meant to be used with multiple clients where you're making money off of it. The last thing I wanted to mention about maintaining health of your hair is haircuts. Now, I don't want to be the person to say that you have to get a haircut every seven weeks, but if you are straightening your hair, curling your hair, doing any kind of heat styling, like blow drying it, and or coloring it a lot, you are most definitely going to end up having split ends on your hair. And when you go to a salon, make sure you find a salon where you can find a hairstylist that does a dusting treatment. Not every hairstylist will call it that. You take the hair strand and you bend it with your fingers and all the little hairs that poke out are gonna probably have split ends in them. They won't always have split ends in them, but um, Guy Tang actually has a really interesting video about this where if you manually take which hairs have split ends, the hairstylist will like bend the hair and cut away the tips of all of those split ends. And they're usually through the middle, they're not just the bottom. So yeah, the only other way to take off these split ends if you aren't dusting it is to chop all of it off. And then what's the point of having hair if you're just constantly chopping it shorter than you want to chop it? Because if those split ends stay there, it's going to travel up the hair shaft as your hair grows out. So they're always going to stay in the middle zone of your hair. And your hair is just going to continuously break off over time as you're growing it out. And you're not going to get anywhere. And so when people say, if you don't cut your hair often, it's not going to grow. It's not because hair stops growing when you don't cut it. Hair will always grow half an inch per month on average. Some people grow faster, some people grow slower, depending on lifestyle, stress levels, genetics, and hormones. But if you aren't cutting off the split ends that are breaking your hair off while you're growing out, you're gonna stay at the same length. But I don't recommend that for everybody because I think there's like three girls off the top of my head that come in once a year and they just get like, you know, three to five inches chopped off the bottom and they go home and their hair is perfectly fine for the rest of the year and it's because their hair is naturally straight, they don't ever color it, they let it air dry, they don't heat style it, they don't do anything other than maybe braiding it and putting it up in a bun every once in a while. So people that don't do stuff to their hair and their hair is extremely healthy don't need to come in for that many frequent trims. 
but I also have some people who come in more often than they need to just because they like the way it feels to get a fresh trim. And a good way, like if you're on a budget, you're probably watching this because you like to color your own hair, right? Um, probably to save money. You can also cut your own hair and I don't want to freak anyone out by saying that, but if you have long enough hair that you can actually see the tips of your hair, take some scissors. These are not the scissors I cut hair with, but to a beauty supply where they might have real cutting shears that are definitely going to be cheaper, but they're better than using like kitchen scissors or craft scissors. So I go sit out on the front porch on a nice day, and um, or you could sit in your bathtub, I guess, if you have a drain catcher. And, the tiny, tiny hairs don't ma don't matter going down the drain. Just take a look, because if you can actually see the split end, just cut off the end of your hair right above where the split end is. You sit there and do this like maybe once a month for 30 minutes each time you do it. You're at least doing something to prevent that hair from breaking. Dark color doesn't prevent hair from staying damaged when it's blonde underneath. Okay. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm gonna go let you guys click on the next one. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'm sorry if there's still things that you can't figure out about your hair. Just message me in the comments below. Also, if you want some real serious one-on-one -on -one hair advice, please message me on Kylie Summers Hair on Instagram. That is my professional hair page, and I will personally guide you through your hair journey. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like because these videos are hard to edit. I'm really ADD and I can't focus. So um, be proud of me for getting this out there because I have a full-time job. <laughs> All right, bye guys. Stay epic.